Good morning. It is early, so I don't know if anybody's actually going to be on here at all, but that's okay. I just want to bring you some truth here this morning. Uh, I haven't done a YouTube live in a long time, but uh, figured I'd do it and see what happens. Um, I was reading an article on Sermon Audio that is absolutely shocking to me. Um, it, it, it's... I guess it shouldn't be shocking to me. I, I shouldn't say it's shocking, but it's revealing. Um, it's called, it says, uh, Evangelical Belief in Reincarnation and Astrology. Shockingly high survey finds. This is from ChristianHeadlines.com. It says, Roughly half of self-identified evangelicals affirm at least one New Age belief, including a third who believe in psychics and one in five who believe in reincarnation or astrology, according to a new Pew Research Central poll. A survey of Christians and non-Christians found that New Age beliefs may be more widespread than previously thought. Now let me stop here and say, most of these people that call themselves Christians are not. And I'm not being unkind to anybody. I'm just telling you that they're not. When you bring them the gospel... And you, talk, and you ask them what the gospel is. When someone tells you they are a Christian, the first thing you ought to ask them is, what is the gospel? Ask them what is the gospel. By asking them what is the gospel, then you will be able to determine better, maybe not fully, but you'll be able to determine better if they even know what the gospel is, by if they're a Christian or not. You'll be able to tell that at least if they're close, if they understand the gospel from their heart. Now, that doesn't mean that they've had that gospel experience in their life. That is not up to you to decide. That is between them and the Lord. But, you know, we, we have an understanding. We can look and see things, okay? By example, okay, among self-identified evangelicals, 24% believe spiritual energy can be located within physical things. Yeah, it's called devils, but it's not a positive thing. It's a bad thing, okay? It's a bad thing. 33% believe in psychics. Well, I believe psychics are real too. I don't believe in them though. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe on the God of the Bible. I believe that God casts them down and says they're necromancers and says they're uh, those that consult with familiar spirits and they're evil. These are people that are saying there's something favorable about psychics, that God will use psychics with them. No, God hates that. Remember what happened with when the devil, uh, when the woman with the possessed, the witch of Endor? Uh, I don't believe she really pulled up Samuel. I don't believe any witch can pull up Samuel or any other saint of God. I believe it was a mocking, but, you know, we're not going to get into that today. That's, that's, a, that's a deeper subject for another day that I don't feel like having... 9 million YouTube fights in my comment section about how you think it's different. I, I'm really not into arguing anymore. I don't have time for it. I just have time to serve the Lord. 19% um, believe in reincarnation. 19%. 19%. Okay, well, let me safely let you know. Let me safely let you know that uh, upon the authority of Scripture that those 19 people, or 90% of people, they're not saved. They can call themselves Christians if they want to. They can call themselves Christians if they want to. But they're not. You either believe in regeneration or reincarnation. You cannot believe in both. If you have been regenerated, then you understand what regeneration is. It means to be born, regene from above. 18% believe in astrology. That's that the stars, they use them to tell the future, monthly prognostic prognosticators. They, they, that's what the Bible warns about them. Deuteronomy 18, the Bible warns about all of these things as things that God hates. 47% of evangelicals affirm at least one of the four New Age beliefs. If they espouse them in their hearts, then they are not children of God. That percentage is even higher among Catholics. Well, Catholics aren't Christians. They're not saved. 
I love Catholic people, and I want you to be saved by the grace of God. I want you to know the forgiveness of sins and know that there is no mediator between God and man save Christ Jesus only. He is the only mediator between God and man. There is no other mediator. Mary is not co-redemptress. You need Jesus. You need Jesus alone. Jesus can save you. Jesus alone. 22% of atheists... Oh, by the way, uh, mainline Christians, 67%, and Protestants with the historical black tradition, 72%. These are people that claim to be Christians. Do you understand that? And they hold New Age beliefs. 22% of atheists and 56% of agnostics affirm at least one of the four New Age beliefs. Among the general population, 69% of women and 55% of men believe in at least one New Age tenet. Just as women are more likely than men to identify with a religion and to engage in a number of religious practices, women are also more likely to hold New Age beliefs, Claire says a research analyst at Pew Research Center. Across all four measures, belief in psychics, reincarnation, and astrology and spiritual energy can be found in objects. Largely shares of women than men subscribe to these beliefs. Okay, well that's normal because see, the Bible talks about how women can be carried away. Uh, most women uh, have led cult movements. Uh, one need only look at the Seventh Day Adventists and see that they, and I'm not, listen, you may not like the way I'm saying this, but I say it upon the authority of Scripture and see and in experience in seeing it. The most effeminate men I've ever seen in my life say this phrase. And Ellen G. White says, Listen, I'm not being unkind. I'm telling you the truth. I watched it. I've been to state fairs. I've evangelized to people. And I've watched the men sit in cower while their women stand up like the king prophetesses of them all and rebuke men. That's because they fall into that Jezebel spirit, that false spirit that God warns against. And they're carried away with it. Revelation says that the churches were deceived by Jezebel and they sat, the prophets sat at the table of Jezebel and ate. And they were defiled and they were in bed with Jezebel. God hates spiritual fornication. Now, what's the solution? Why is this happening? I will tell you. There is an absence of true Bible doctrine being preached today. There, there is a running away with this, and even among Baptists, and I've been guilty of this in the past too, of concentrating and focusing on things that aren't the main thing. Christ is the main thing. The doctrine of Christ is the main thing. The Word of God is the main thing. We must get back to the Word of God. Yeah, you're going to preach on some of these other things, but people are so consumed today with flat earth, they're so consumed today with the cults, with with all these other things that, that nobody's laying down firm and solid and, 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 and foundational doctrine. We've got to get back to reading the Bible, to preaching the Bible, to teaching the doctrines of the faith, to growing our people in the faith. Yes, warn them about the cults, but getting into all the spooky stuff and, and worrying about all that stuff. Yeah, there's a time to talk about some of those things, but it should not be your main diet. The main diet of the child of God should be the meat and potatoes of the Word of God. It should be the, the, the Word of God. It should, this should be your focus. When pastors and people get back to studying the Bible and learning and sitting at the feet of Christ and learning the Word of God, they're going to be have a, have a ready defense for all these things. They're going to know that, hey, listen, Deuteronomy 18 and these other chapters of the Bible talk about these things. Paul talks about witchcraft. Paul talks about who hath, who hath seduced you. You know, who drew you away from the faith? Who took you away from the faith? Paul warns about such things. All the way from Genesis to Revelation, we have, we have a series of warnings. All the way through to the end, the sorcery, the end time sorcery that would rise. The New Age belief. Look, it's a lack of doctrinal teaching. It's also the rise of the internet. Everybody and their mother is teaching something on the internet today with no qualifications at all. They get saved, or hopefully they're saved. They jump on board the latest flat earth movement, the latest other movement. And some of you guys are going to get mad at me. But friend, I care more about what God thinks than you being mad at me. I, I don't think I'm better than you. I've been forgiven of my sins, cleansed of my unrighteousness. I daily have to go to Christ for forgiveness of sins. I'm not better than anybody, okay? 
But I do understand some things being saved for 17 years. I do get some things, and I do get the fact that there's a lot of there's a lot of nonsense being taught out there and distractions. There's a lot of them out there, and it's costing us. We've got to get to the Word of God. A lack of being in the churches. You know, a lack of being in the in in a good Bible preaching church. Churches aren't perfect. If you join it, it's going to get worse. It's not going to be perfect more because you're a part of it. Get over yourself. Get into a Bible preaching church. Get rooted and grounded in the faith. Stop getting everything off of the internet and get a balance for traditional biblical doctrine rooted and found in the Word of God. And you know what? Then most of these people that call themselves that, they'll realize by good, strong Bible teaching that they're not Christians. These 47% of evangelicals, they'll realize they're not saved. Listen, let me tell you something, friend. And if you're listening to this, I got news for you. If you're holding to these things, you need Jesus Christ. You were a sinner before God and exceedingly sinful. Jesus Christ came and was born of a virgin and lived a perfect, sinless life. God created this world. He spoke this world into existence. The God of the Bible spoke it into existence. He has a son, and he sent forth his only begotten son in the world to save sinners. He was born of a virgin, lived a perfect, sinless life. He died on the cross for your sins. He was buried, and he rose again from the dead. He gave victory over the devil. Christ was manifest to destroy the works of the devil, and he did just that. We have victory through Christ Jesus. We have victory over sin through Christ Jesus. None of us are perfect, but Christ is perfect. He is our all. What you need to do is repent of your sin and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. By faith, by grace, through faith. The Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. There is no boasting. Boasting is excluded by grace, by the law of grace. Listen, grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. If you will put your faith and trust in Christ today, he will save your soul. And he will give you a home in heaven. And then get yourself into church. Get yourself into a good King James only Bible preaching church. Get into it. Learn the doctrines of the faith. Be grounded in the faith. Be around your brethren and sisters in Christ and grow in the Lord. If you can't find one, move to one. The church is more important than your job, than anything else. That local New Testament assembly that God hath called men to make disciples everywhere. How do you make them? Uh, they're, they're saved, they're baptized, and they join a church and they learn good, sound Bible doctrine. My friend, this could be the greatest day of your life. You could be saved by the grace of God. You that are children of God, get yourself grounded in the faith. Then you won't be moved by every wind of doctrine, everything that's out there, every little thing out there that's trying to distract you from the main teachings of the Word of God. To know Christ, that I may know Him in the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His suffering being made conformable unto his death. May God bless you and lead you into paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Have a good day.